how how drastic do you see this change to be? Do you think it is it is uh, it is uh, how major is it in your assessment? I mean, uh, I, I think it is yeah. it's absolutely critical for Malaysia's survival as a capital market. When mm -hmm. you speak to overseas investors, it, it's the it's the number one turnoff mm -hmm. uh, for Malaysia now. Now, as ever, it's a, a no-win situation for politicians because they've now dealt with this, so everyone says, okay, that's done, let's focus on the next thing. Mm -hmm. And the next thing uh, is to take the GLC reform one step further. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, when I look at Malaysia's uh, greatest asset, it, it's, it's, it's diverse people. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it would seem, you can, you can see with uh, many of Malaysia's greatest companies, they are operators meritocracies. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll cite examples like CIMB, AirAsia, uh, IOI Corp. There's no sort of racial agenda there, it's mm -hmm. just based purely on merit. Mm -hmm. It would appear that with the GLCs, which are a major part uh, of listed Malaysia, there is still uh, a, a social agenda at work there. Mm -hmm. And that sort of needs to be to be undone because it, it it, it traps people it, it, or it traps talent and, and I'm not talking about individual races I'm talking about all races mm -hmm. it traps because of very sort of feudal structure that often takes place there so if if uh, merit could be encouraged mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, that would be a, a great <coughs> step forward and the politically expedient way of doing it in my view mm -hmm. would be the government has no role in the present day in owning companies. They should sell them off, mm. uh, introduce a regulator to ensure that the social agenda is met, make sure that people have telephone lines and mm. electricity, etc. Uh, and free up shareholders to appoint the boards of directors to appoint the best managers. And if those shareholders make mistakes, then they find new directors or new managers to do the same. And ultimately, it will be a win-win for politicians who will be seen to be giving Malaysians the best service thanks to all that competition uh, and it will be uh, very vibrant for the economy because it will create globally competitive companies because we know because of Malaysia's diverse uh, uh, people uh, that Malaysians are very capable of creating globally competitive companies if allowed to do so. This uh, concept of growth with the key where uh, the market knows best and the invisible hand in inevitably uh, creates a fair and just society. We know that there's not worked between 57 and 70. Uh, and today, I believe that we still need the policy of uh, growth with distribution. <clears throat> While uh, the NEP policies uh, have been successful, uh, and uh, there are many indications of how successful they are. Uh, Bumi Putras, for example, in terms of professionals, who were just 4.9% in 1917, and today they are 37.6%. That's, that's excellent. But they form 66% of the population. So it's that there needs to be some uh, redistribution, some assistance in terms of scholarship and you know, selling the the best boomies to the best universities to come back and create the profession. Also sending the best Malaysians, the Malays and the Bumi Putras and the non Bumi Putras. So there is a need to assist, especially the poorer sections of society, uh, of course, irrespective of race. But since Bumi Putras, uh, us, there are 5.1% of them were still poor. And Chinese is 0.6%, Indians in 2.5%. Mm -hmm. So they're still. Uh, disproportionately poor and they need assistance, it has, to be, it has to be done. But we have been only looking at equity and of course as you said there's a debate whether we have met or not but our calculation mm -hmm. shows that we is 19.4 percent. But that is only one form of wealth. The boomies in terms of property ownership is only 15 percent uh, and uh, the population that, that is 66 percent of the population is only owned, uh, six. Uh, uh, 15%. So there is a need for NEP. <clears throat> but the point that the Prime Minister made and that I would like to reiterate is that there are ways to bring about this distributive justice through policies which are market friendly. And if there are policies which are not market friendly and which, uh, which uh, creates a uh, irritant or a hindrance for others to grow, it, it 
it does not help the boomies either. So when you open up the system and you allow the best to survive and prosper and create jobs, the boomies will benefit. But I don't think time is right for us to move away consciously uh, from this uh, model of growth with, just, uh, growth with equity and to just hope that growth itself will create enough trickle-down effects that all the boats will be lifted. The boats will not be lifted without mm -hmm. a conscious policy. In terms of implementation, implementation, do you do you see any problems in terms of uh, in terms of implementation itself? Implementation has uh, been an issue undoubtedly, mm -hmm. but the prime minister, one of the first uh, things that he did when he became prime minister was to force upon the ministers, mm -hmm. that includes me and the senior government servant, this concept of KPIs. Mm -hmm. So the last few weeks we have been really looking at KPIs and uh, the Prime Minister wants to hold every minister and senior servant to what he promises. And uh, so I think implementation will improve by leaps and bounds with this KPI system being so, so passionately promoted by the Prime mm -hmm. Minister. As a matter of curiosity, what, what kind of KPIs might say a minister have? You know? Uh, there is no no free lunch. You become a minister. You you, you say you want to serve the people and you want to dedicate your time and energy to a national purpose, and and you really have to prove that you are worth uh, being appointed minister. And you you have your KPIs in me. But the the more important point that it cascades down. With the minister being responsible, he will go to his senior civil servant and make sure that they deliver and they will go to the junior service cascade down the whole system. I think it will work. I think it's, that is the way to move forward to make sure that, that everyone delivers. Everyone is accountable for what uh, is happening and we know where the fight is. We know that this guy is the one holding the file and everyone will make sure that that file moves and afterwards and for that. To answer one question I'm going to be asked, sort of, uh, those companies that are pending um, uh, fulfilling their boomy quota, will they therefore be forgiven overnight? No, only them? forgiven. We will write to them uh, tomorrow, next few days, to say that they don't have to be. Okay. But, uh, we will be proactive. We'll write to them and say that these conditions don't apply to you. Yes, uh, because we have okay. removed our constraint, but if the state mm. says that you cannot sell this loan land to a foreigner, they are, they are, they are bound to, because it's not a it's not a federal matter. But we, we say that we have no uh, restrictions except for those uh, above twenty million and involves in dilution of Bumiputra or state agencies. But uh, do you expect any problems on that front? I mean, no, it's up to them really. They, yeah. they they can have their own rules, and it's a state matter legally. Mm -hmm. The constitution says that land is a state matter. Mm -hmm. The residential we were very open. Uh, any any property that's uh, above two hundred fifty thousand, they can buy. Below 250,000, they cannot buy. Mm. Commercial, they have to come back to us. Now we are saying that for commercial, they cannot buy anything below 500,000. Mm. It's too small anyway for foreigners to buy. Anything above 500,000, they don't need FIC approval. Mm. In the case of residential, we are saying that uh, we, we maintain the limit of 250,000 for time being. Below that, you cannot buy. Above that, you can. But to be consistent with the commercial, we will make it 500,000 uh, from 1st January 2010. Mm -hmm. So the figure to remember is eventually 500,000 for both uh, residential and commercial. Below that you cannot buy, above that you know, don't need approval. You don't need approval. Mm -hmm. So how does the... Uh, uh, the well, FIC doesn't exist as a body anymore, no, correct? No. So, I mean, uh, there's a requirement that if, uh, if a Bumitra boom, boom owner sells to a non Bumitra owner... Come to, uh, we will form a unit in EPU. Uh, the no unit will take over. Yeah. Mm. They, they form, they, that's all the unit in. Mm. We will organize that, uh, the housekeeping matter, that, that unit uh, sending out the guideline to, 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 to take over that function. That we done. But FIC, as we know, it wouldn't exist. We did back on today. The, uh, any any idea of uh, what kind of legislative changes will take place? I mean, some broad direction in terms of what will happen? Oh yes, yeah, so these okay. are basically do with the powers of the Securities Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, as you know, Securities Commission is one part of uh, the process of uh, monitoring and enforcing laws with respect to companies. There is also the Registrar of Companies, etc. 
Uh, so uh, there, 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 there is a need to make sure that the Security Commission has enough powers uh, to, to, to ensure that the system is uh, truly transparent and uh, to avoid the shenanigans in, uh, in the system. And uh, the powers are there and, and, and this will be enhanced, powers of Security Commission. Mm. I think they, 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 that may eventually come about, but at this point of time, it's just to give them more powers based on their own law.